Um, but tonight we have Elsa Maria Melendez, and I'm actually going to introduce an introducer. We have a special treat. We are excited to host artist Elsa Maria Melendez from Puerto Rico tonight, and she will be presenting in Spanish. And our esteemed colleague, Professor Carmelo Esterich from the uh, Humanities, History, and Social Sciences Department has graciously agreed to translate into English. And it's serendipitous that this talk is scheduled during Latinx Heritage Month, and we hope it will be not the last such presentation. But no matter what's spoken, we all have Elsa Maria Melendez's stunning visual language to greet us. And now I'm happy to introduce Carmelo, who will introduce Elsa Maria. <laughs> Carmelo Esterich is Professor of Humanities and Cultural Studies at the college, where he teaches from Gilgamesh to Skyscrapers and Bjork, from the writings of Christopher Columbus to Frida Kahlo and Alfonso Cuaron. His book, Concrete and Countryside, The Urban and the Rural in 1950s Puerto Rican Culture, deals with the response of the arts to the rapid modernization and urbanization of the island. His latest book, Star Wars Multiverse, is a multidisciplinary study of the franchise as only fictionally far, far away. And he's currently working on a volume in the 33 and a third music book series about the Mexican rock band Café Tacuba and their 1994 album Ray. In 2021, he won the Excellence in Teaching Award here at the college, and he is the co-host of Nick and Melos uh, Hyperspace, a Star Wars podcast. So, a welcoming Carmelo. Good evening, everybody. I just want to thank Joan for this opportunity because it's just, I'm from Puerto Rico, and it's just wonderful to meet more artists from there. And I love the idea of um, exchanging this sort of cultural, artistic, exchange with you guys about, um, about the work that she's doing, which is pretty marvelous. Um, Elsa Maria Melendez is a visual artist and curator born and living in Caguas, Puerto Rico, working with textiles, printmaking, embroidery, and synthetic materials. Melendez is a recipient of the 2023 Studios at Mass Mocha Puerto Rico Artist Fellows, a Commended Artist and People's Choice Awardee in the 2022 Outwin Puchiver Portrait Competition, in the National Portrait Gallery at Smithsonian Institution in Washington. In, in 2019, she received the Flamboyant Artist Fellowship in partnership with NALAC, was nominated for the 2019 United States Artist Fellowship and received the Lexus Fellowship in 2009. Vengo de una isla de confusión, I come from an island of confusion, at the Rollins, Art, Rollins Museum of Arts Florida in 2023, was Melendez's first solo museum exhibition outside of Puerto Rico. In 2022, a version of this exhibit of this exhibition traveled to the Alabama Contemporary Art Center in Mobile, Alabama. She has exhibited, and I lost the page because it all went away. Thank you. <laughs> she has exhibited in more than 95 group exhibitions in the United States, Uruguay, Cuba, Ireland, Romania, Portugal, the Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico. She is also the curator at the Museo de Arte de Caguas in Puerto Rico. Welcome, Elsa Maria. Buenas noches. Gracias por estar aquí. Muchas gracias, Carmelo. ¿Me oyen bien? Sí, ok. Me siento muy honrada de presentar mi trabajo ante la comunidad de Columbia College, Chicago. Ustedes, gracias por estar aquí. Eh, agradezco la invitación de la profesora John Girox y Amy Moon y del Departamento de Diseño y mi gratitud especial a Euros por su, a todas sus atenciones, gentileza, al doctor Carmelo Sterrich, compatriota, que hará posible la traducción, y a la señora Gina Ordaz. I am very honored to be here and presenting my work to Columbia College Chicago, and I'm very thankful for all of the work of Professor Jean Giroux and Amy Mooney has done from the Department of Art and Design. Um, also, a special thank you for Professor Giroux and for Carmelo Estridge um, for all of the work putting this event together and for the translation for the event. Despegar los labios, tensar los hilos. En el Caribe crecimos con el viene o no viene. Cada vez que se forma una onda tropical, pensamos si será un huracán que nos azotará. Esa incertidumbre es parte de nuestra personalidad. Puerto Rico es una isla en conflicto. Aquí se politiza lo concerniente a la educación, a la mujer, a la perspectiva de género a los derechos laborables desde una visión político-partidista, a lo que se añade la religión, 
aunque supuestamente haya separación de iglesia y estado. In the Caribbean we live in the is it coming or is it not coming? Every time a tropical storm might or might not turn into a hurricane. We live in this uncertainty and in and this is part of our personality in our island. Puerto Rico is an island in conflict. Um, everything is politicized in regards to education, to women, any perspectives of gen gender, of workers' rights, and everything has a very political and a partisan political perspective, including things like religion, even though there is supposed to be a division between church and state. De todo esto se alimenta mi proceso creativo. Observo detenidamente la cultura puertorriqueña, la cotidianidad, frases, modos, tra tradiciones y refranes de la sabiduría popular. Esa idiosincrasia en todos sus contextos nutre mi obra. I, my creative process uh, is fed by lots of different things. I, I'm always paying attention to Puerto Rican culture, to sort of daily life, the phrases, the, the costumes, traditions, even refrains that people say in the street, the wisdom, the popular wisdom of the people in Puerto Rico, and that kind of idiosyncrasy of the island are the context of my work. Si resumo lo que he hecho por los pasados 26 años, utilizaría dos palabras, contar y transformar. If I had to summarize what I have done in the last 26 years of my creative work, I would summarize it, summarize it in two words, to tell and to transform. Tanto en la curaduría de exposiciones como en la producción de mi cuerpo de trabajo, cuento historias del país y de la condición humana. En cada obra hay un trabajo emocional intangible y de eso se trata también la transformación de hacerlo intangible, tangible. Ahí es cuando entra el, materi el material con sus noblezas para impedir que los significados se estanquen. Usualmente con toda como toda historia la trama se complica y esa narración se torna densa. Mi, mi intención no solamente es crear una obra, una obra contemplativa, me interesa que se convierta en un espejo para mirarse dentro del contexto de la obra. Both in my work as a curator for exhibitions and in the work that I do as my creative work, I'm always telling stories about my country and about the human condition. In each work, I am sort of creating a, a, trying to transform what is an intangible emotional work and trying to transform it into something tangible. And this is where the material and the malleability of the different materials are sort of making the whole process more complex. I'm trying, I'm trying to make sure that meaning doesn't get stuck and that meaning becomes more and more complex in the way that I'm telling the story. I want to complicate the story. My intention is not to create a, a contemplative work but a work that is a mirror in which we can see ourselves in it. Vengo de una isla que forma parte de los Estados Unidos desde 1898 como resultado de la guerra hispanoamericana y que desde entonces es su colonia. Bajo ese estatus se nos ha impuesto una dependencia que no nos permite alcanzar nuestro potencial económico sin control sobre las relaciones exteriores. I come from an island that is part of the United States since 1998 as a result of the Spanish-American War. And since then, we have been a colony of this country. Under that status, we have been forced into a dependency, an economic dependency, that doesn't let us develop ourselves economically to have a, the, the real potential economic uh, power of our island without the control of any sort of external relations with other countries for trade. Colonizada como también soy, la ambigüedad y el derecho a la duda persisten en mi producción. Admito la desconfianza en un gobierno corrupto, la ausencia de procesos transparentes, resiento el poco valor a la educación pública y los, y los atropellos institucionalizados que generan la precariedad continua. Me gustaría en este momento citar a Raquel Torres Alzola en un ensayo que escribió en el 2013, 2013, titulado Los cuerpos insubordinados de Elsa María Meléndez, arte y género en el Caribe, eh, Raquel nos dice, nos percatamos de la posibilidad de confluencias que puede haber entre la deconstrucción del cuerpo colonizado y la deconstrucción del sujeto femenino inmerso en un proceso histórico marcado por la colonización. I am also colonized. 
and the ambiguity and the, and I have a right to doubt. And that is something that persists in the way that I create my work. I, I admit the mistrust that I have for, for the government, for a corrupt government, for the absence of any process or transparent process. And I resent the, the lack of value for the public education and for the institutions that should be, that should be working out and they're not. Like Raquel Torres Arzola says in an article that she published in 2013 about, about my work, her work, my work, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I quote, we are aware of the possibility of confluences, of, of junctions, of, of lineages that can be between a, the deconstruction of a colonized body and the deconstruction of the female subject as it is inserted in the, in, the, in the historical process of colonization. Hace 18, 18 años trabajo con el autorretrato. Esto llegó de casualidad en mi producción cuando buscaba un rostro para una figura y decidí utilizar el mío. No esperaba que me iban a reconocer, pero me reconocieron. <laughs> 18 years ago, I started working with self-portraits. I was only looking for a face to insert into my work and I used mine, and I had assumed that nobody was going to recognize me, and then everyone did. <laughs> el poder, el pudor, al ser reconocida, <laughs> estimuló el adentrarme en espacios íntimos para batallar con mis propios pudores. Al integrar mi autorretrato a esa comparsa de personajes corruptos, cedo el control de la escena a la audiencia. Y esa dinámica de sentirme revelada me incitó a seguir explorando el, el, el arte del autorretrato. The, the sort of not sense of, of shame or modesty of sort of being exposed um, by being discovered, by being identified in this work, um, sort of helped me struggle with my own, with my own conflicts about um, sort of admitting my, my limitations or my shame. And so by using the self-portrait, it made it into a process of my understanding, my own limitations about, of, my, of representing myself in my work. Sí, eh, eh, me sentí sumamente seducida por esa dimensión del arte que hasta el momento era desconocida para mí, que yo pudiera hablar desde mi propia intimidad, no necesariamente contando mi historia, pero prestando mi rostro para infinidad de narraciones y... Eh, comencé a transitar la dualidad y hasta el día de hoy he continuado trabajando esa dualidad en mi, tra en mi obra. And so I was very seduced by the, the power of using my face, of making self-portraits and adding my sort of intimate life and my body into, into my own work as a personal history. And that personal history sort of connected to so a duality between what I am and what Puerto Rico is, or what the, the subject of colonial Puerto Rico is. Es un desafío como mujer y como artista generar imágenes que reten las nociones convencionales del cuerpo, como también a través del análisis ubicarme en un espacio vulnerable para lograr formular cuestionamientos a las propias mujeres. Desde hace más de 15 años trabajo sobre la violenta visión hipersexualizada del desnudo de la mujer en una cultura que la etiqueta como objeto de consumo. Quisiera hacer constar que todos los géneros son afectados por estas dinámicas, incluyendo a los hombres. Esta violencia la será tanto física como mentalmente porque el valor del cuerpo radica en el nivel de apetencia sexual que genera. My challenge as a woman, as an artist, is to, to generate images that, that, that question the notions, the conventional notions of the body, and al almost like an analysis of the body, to um, talk about the, the vulnerable space of, of the body as just questions by women, like how women question their own, their own bodies. For about 15 years, I work about the, the Whoa, this is one, this is a big, a big phrase. The hypersexualized, violent vision of the naked female body. And especially in a culture that uses that body as an object of consumption. I would like to, 
I would like to admit or, or recognize that all genders are affected by this hypersexualization. It's not only women, including men, is part of the, the issue. And this violence affects both physically and mentally. And the value of the body, it is usually based on how desirable that body is. Resalto la imagen de la mujer sublevada contra estos convencionalismos, tantos los que banalizan y trivializan el cuerpo como la, los que la cubren de tabúes y estereotipos. Esta pieza se titula En lo, lo que faltaba, está realizada en textiles impresos. Eh, las mujeres las presento en metamorfosis, satíricamente se saluden oliéndose los traseros como los perros. Tomo el pulso de esta manera de la evolución de la mujer, eh, de la imagen de la mujer. I try to um, highlight the image of the women in my work against these sort of very conventional images. And both in the, in the, in the, in the social work that sort of banalizes or trivializes the female body, and also the people that consider the female body as taboo as, as, or as a stereotype. This work is called Lo que faltaba, was what, what was left, what remains. And it is done in printed textile. And these women are in sort of met metamorphosis, and there's a little bit of a satire because they're sort, of, they're sort of turning into dogs. They're sniffing their behinds. And so they're, she's sort of using that notion of the body and transformation. And she, 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 she says she takes the pulse of the evolution of the image of the woman. Mi formación fue mayormente en el grabado y la misma disciplina que se, que se utiliza en esa técnica me llevó a querer desarrollar un cuerpo de trabajo tridimensional que además de aportar al trabajo de la gráfica, nutriera mis conceptos. Fue así como comencé la impresión de intaglios y serografía sobre papel, eh, rellenándolas, cosiéndolas y colocándolas en estas cajas que funcionan como unos pequeños teatros de marionetas que pueden ser manejados por el espectador. Estas figuritas están sujetadas con hilos a los carriles que están en la parte superior de la caja y el espectador puede entonces mover estos personajes, jugar con las composiciones y traer más eh, significados a, a la obra ¿no? y al concepto. Eh, con este tipo de juego y obra lúdica, eh, yo pues estoy trabajando con el poder, ¿no? las construcciones de los roles en la sociedad. Esta pieza se titula El cafetín en la isla, alude al círculo social. Los híbridos eh, son constantes en mi producción, sitúan las escenas en espacios de transformación. De esa manera puedo aludir a lo oculto y a lo perverso, no solamente a una figura, ¿no? sino a lo que hay detrás, a las personalidades, a los ánimos. My, my artistic formation is in printmaking, and so I started working in 2D. And, but I run, wanted to transform my two-dimensionality into three-dimensional work. Um, and in this work that is called the, 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 the Coffee Shop in the Island, El Cafetín de la, en la Isla, it's a work in which we are I'm sort of using the printmaking technique to create figures of bodies, but putting them in a three-dimensional space. They're all hanging from threads that are attached to tracks that are on top of the box. And so the bodies can be moved and sort of um, changed position. So there's not one, one place for them in the box itself. This kind of element of, of moving the, the images is part of my, my desire for transformation and for creating hybridity, especially what it remain, what it, in terms of the two-dimensionality of printmaking and three-dimensionality of sculpture. And this, this piece, this specific piece, allowed me, uh, allowed me to work with things about the dark side of humanity and the perverse side of humanity. Quiero hacer constar que en Puerto Rico los, hay algunos cafetines que venden alcohol, y este se refiere a ese tipo de cafetín que consigues café y consigues alcohol. Um, a cafetín en Puerto Rico is a place that sells coffee and alcohol. So, a café is a place for coffee. This is a slightly more dark place because you can drink alcohol and you can drink coffee. Thank you. 
tal le quise que la audiencia pudiera acariciar los contenidos y que entrara a estos espacios más allá de la caja, sino que el espectador entrara dentro de estos espacios. Así comienzo a trabajar las telas porque me interesa que, que la, la obra pueda ser acariciada y tocada y el papel no me permitía eso. Y comienzo entonces con, a trabajar las instalaciones. A partir de esta instalación, eh, las telas impresas en serigrafía y el bordado comenzaron a construir parte del vocabulario de mi lenguaje visual como herramientas que libero de la connotación asociada a la creación dócil. So I wanted to move beyond, I wanted to keep working in three-dimensional work, but I was limited by the boxes. And so I wanted the, the spectator to enter spaces within my work rather than looking at the work and playing with the work. Um, and so I started working with fabric and I started working with the notion of installations rather than simple, uh, simple three-dimensional objects. Um, I started working with silk screen pressed on fabric and, and working on embroidery and adding that to the pieces that I, that I was creating. Um, I, wanted, I wanted the audience to caress and to touch and to sort of be in interaction with the, with the visual language that was already added to, to the work itself. I think that's it. <laughs> Y bueno, trabajando con la tela, entonces el concepto sí se enriqueció ante la contienda de demostrar la fortaleza de estos materiales, trabajándolos de manera no conven convencional, más allá de las etiquetas que pueden tener estos materiales, como el bordado, la tela, que usualmente son destinados para las manualidades, pues yo quise arrancarle esas etiquetas a estos materiales y traerlos al lenguaje del arte contemporáneo. La torera, que es la que estamos viendo, es una declaración del esfuerzo por dominar la técnica a gran escala, la sublevación del bordado, de la connotación dulce y el dominio del artista sobre el hilo de la creación. Esta pieza está completamente bordada y tiene una medida de 10 pies por 10 pies. I wanted to move, I wanted to change the concept of embroidery and sewing as sort of soft or delicate material um, processes and make them into, into something that was number one in large scale and number two that has sort of added all of the conversations about the body that I have been talking about before. This piece is called La Torera, the bullfighter, the female bullfighter. And then the entire piece is embroidered and then there's a piece of fabric attached to it for, for the, the red fabric. It is a large scale piece. It is 10 feet by 10 feet. So I, I, she wanted to keep this, the two dimensionality of her early work, but add the three dimensionality of the evolution of her work. En la isla apagada, como si se titula esta pieza, le apagada la isla impagable. Marca el momento en el que el crédito de Puerto Rico fue degradado a chatarra. En el 2016 comenzó la imposición de la Junta de Control Fiscal, conformada por miembros nombrados por el presidente de los Estados Unidos, quienes administran y recortan los fondos públicos de Puerto Rico en el tema educativo, en la salud, en la vivienda y en todos los aspectos de la vida de los puertorriqueños. La portada de los periódicos y las exclusivas de los noticieros por semanas estuvieron dedicadas al crédito chatarra de Puerto Rico y a la deuda millonaria en una especie de lavado de cerebro colectivo, eh, lo que en efecto minó la autoestima de los puertorriqueños. The species called Isla Apagada or Turned Off Island. Apagada is to turn off the light. And the text says, um, Apagada la Isla Impagable, is that right? So it's the turned off the, the island that cannot be paid. And so she's playing with apagar, which is to turn off, and pagar, which is to pay. So it's a play on words that it's impossible for me to translate in English, but she's playing with that word in that case. And, and this piece is very much connected to the, to the gigantic economic crash of the credit of Puerto Rico. In 2016, the US government created what is called in English the Financial Oversight and Management Board. In Spanish, it's Junta de Control Fiscal. Most people in Puerto Rico call it La Junta, which was created by the US government 
All the members of this organization are nominated by the President of the United States, so they are not elected by Puerto Ricans nor elected by Congress. And they are the ones who are administrating the debt and the economic crash in Puerto Rico. And part of the problem with this is that they have been cutting the budget for education, for health, for housing, and for every aspect of Puerto Rican life. The newspapers and television shows are constantly talking about what this junta, what this financial oversight board is doing, and the, um, the whole notion of the debt, the Puerto Rican debt, is part of, has a, the effect of this representation by the junta and by media is that it's al almost been like a brainwash for Puerto Ricans that they have their self-esteem has completely been destroyed because all the images that they see is of the, the economic crisis of the island. La pieza eh, nace de esa misma necesidad de crear una afirmación de orgullo y del valor que re radica en nuestra isla, un valor impagable que no es negociable. And so this piece is sort of a reaction for trying to create a value to, to the Puerto Ricans and to, to make it an affirmation and pride of Puerto Rico itself um, and to, to think of the island as something that, that in a way has lots of value rather than no value at all and that it is not a negotiable element, that this is not something that you only answer with money. El ingenio colectivo La Maldición de la Cotorra está basada en una de las principales luchas del pueblo puertorriqueño en defensa de la Universidad de Puerto Rico, primer centro educativo de educación pública del país. El carácter monumental y obsesivo de esta instalación mantiene la coherencia de una construcción en proceso. En mi contexto, lo que construye el partido en poder es destruido por el próximo partido que entra o que es elegido en el gobierno. Así somos una isla que se destruye y reconstruye constantemente, dividida entre fragmentos de una identidad en constante disputa entre ideologías que se revuelcan a conveniencia del imperio colonizador. This piece is called the, the collective ingenuity or the curse of the parrot. And in, in, in Puerto Rican Spanish, parrot there is referring to people who are constantly speaking without saying anything. So there's no substance to what they're saying. Um, and this piece is based on one of the most important sort of democratic demonstrations, political demonstrations by the Puerto Rican people about the University of Puerto Rico, which is the most important university in the island. And because of the economic crisis, the budget of the university has been cut dramatically. The, the piece itself is talking about the sort of reconstruction and destruction and reconstruction of the island, using it from the context of the university, but also talking about the way in which a political par party is in power and then everything that that political party, party has created is totally destroyed by the next party who is now in power. And so there is never a continuation of construction. There is construction, destruction, construction, destruction. And that cycle is part of what the piece seems to be about. But, but, but I, think, I think that's it. it it's also, of course, all con connected to the idea of the, um, of the colonizing empire and the way that it thinks of the island itself. Antes de mostrarles un pequeño video sobre la pieza, quisiera añadir que está trabajada toda en textiles, bordados y serigrafía impresa en telas. So the, the entire piece is embroidery, textile. ¿Qué, ¿Qué era lo último? Serigrafía impresa en telas. Oh, and, and then silk screens, silk screens pressed on, on the material. Y bueno, el audio que lleva la pieza es una grabación de una cotorra que sabe algunas palabras. And so the video that we are about to see with related to this piece is the sound of a parrot. I don't hear anything. Se escucha, pero no acá. Hello. 
personalidad con grandes gracias. Ella se amolda a las diferentes salas. I just asked her how large is the piece, and she says that the, the piece can be molded to different rooms depending on how large or small the room is. No se oye. Bueno, lo que se oye es una cotorra repitiendo frases como qué bueno, qué rico, hola, y el efecto de la cotorra eh, entra dentro de mi concepto porque yo vi que a la cotorra le estaban dando, o sea, ella se estaba sintiendo amenazada y lo que ella decía no correspondía a lo que estaba pasando. O sea, que esa conexión de, de hacer las cosas sin pensarlas, sin reflexionarlas, eso fue lo que me dio eh, la clave para integrarla dentro de la instalación. So the, the parrot is saying just regular phrases like, oh, how pretty, how nice, that's good. Even though the parrot was being sort of attacked or, or, or hit. And so she was really intrigued by the idea of this parrot saying things that had nothing to do with what was being done to her. Um, and so therefore that sort of contradiction or that paradox between her, the language of the bird and the actual actions on, on the bird sort of inspired her for including that in the title of the piece. Y bueno, hice la transición de la aguja, para aquellos que hacen grabado, saben que utilizamos una aguja en el intaglio, en el grabado de metal, y esa aguja con la que yo hacía mis diseños para el grabado, hice la transición a la aguja de la máquina de coser. Y entonces esa línea comenzó a hacer hilo en lugar de tinta. Las telas, los hilos y el desgarre comenzaron a dirigir y transformar mis discursos porque me traían mucho, mucha sensibilidad en el proceso. Eh, yo siempre he trabajado la sátira, pero el, el trabajar la tela me dirigió hacia otros espacios conceptuales que yo no había recapacitado antes que podía llegar. Tenso los hilos de la memoria para coser el presente. Esta última frase me recuerda al acto reflexivo que acompaña el hecho de coser largas horas y de bordar, enhebrar la aguja. Es un trabajo bien sosegado. Eh, um, y pienso también en la audiencia y en cómo estos materiales eh, pueden ofrecer un sentido de dom domesticidad según eh, la experiencia que cada uno tiene con el material, ¿no? Y so el I recuerdo. So I slowly did the transition from the engraving needle of printmaking to the needle of the sewing machine. And so I continued working with needles, but I went from ink to thread. Um, and she really um, loved the idea. She has a phrase that she just said, I, I tightened the threads of memory to sew the present. I tightened the threads of memory to sew the present. And this phrase sort of reminded me a lot about the idea of sort of the process, the crafting of embroidery and sewing and stitching and the calming effect that it gives. The whole idea of thread, threading the needle and the long hours that embroidery takes. I also think about the the whole idea of sewing and embroidery and how people connect that to their own memories of members of their family sewing or themselves sewing and the whole idea of domesticity as it relates to the idea of sewing and stitching and embroidering en los últimos años se ha incrementado la presencia de las mujeres en los espacios de música urbana domina, dominados por los hombres, así como un auge en cirugías plásticas, en una estrategia para sentirse mejor consigo mismo o como recurso para encajar dentro de unos cánones de belleza. Esta pieza se titula Impugnaciones vamos a seguir apretando bien duro. Una de las figuras mira su reflejo en un espejo puede sugerir, entre otras cosas, que se mira comparándose con el resto, preguntando, espejito, espejito, ¿cuál es la más bonita? <risa> y sabemos que la hipersexualización del cuerpo puede generar trastornos psicológicos. Las otras tres figuras 
son cantantes contempor contemporáneas de música urbana, reggaetón y dembow, con millones de seguidores en las redes sociales. Y eh, en, durante el proceso de hacer esta obra, yo estoy documentando estas figuras de los nuevos cuentos contemporáneos. Las mujeres aparecen en medias para darle tregua a la mujer cosificada con patas de perra, que es una figura recurrente en mi producción. In the last year, there has been a, an increasing amount of presence of women in the urban music that is usually dominated by men. And also there has been a, a gigantic resurgence of plastic surgery in women for conforming the body to the sort of expectations of beauty in Puerto Rico. This piece is called Challenges. We're going to keep tightening really tight. We're going to be We're gonna, we're gonna keep tightening really tight. <laughs> um, uh, from 2023, and there is a woman on the right that is looking at herself in the mirror, almost as if she's asking the mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the prettiest of them all? And we know that the um, that the hypersexualization of the body is always connected to sort of mental trauma in some ways, and so she's putting that in there. The other three figures are famous singers from reggaeton and dembo, dembow, dembo, I don't know how to say that in English. In Spanish we say dembo, of contemporary music. And, um, and these, are, these are women that have millions of followers on social media. And so I'm, I'm documenting these figures almost as fairy tales of women's bodies in, in the work that I do. The women appear with socks to give a little, a little, a little pause, a little respite Because in many, in many of the work that I have done, women show up with legs of dogs. And so I wanted to sort of do something different instead of doing dog legs from perreo. Everybody knows what perreo is? Reggaeton? <laughs> That doggy style, we call it doggy <laughs> style in Spanish. That's how you dance reggaeton. And so that's part of the, estoy explicando eso porque ellos no saben. Sí. So there's this sort of notion in there that in a lot of her work, the women have dog legs because of that expectation that that movement turns these women into female dogs. And so in here, they don't, they actually have feet and they actually have socks. Como tenemos poco tiempo, no traje la imagen, pero esta pieza puede ser vista por el otro lado, porque es un juego en asomarte como fisgonear lo que está pasando al otro lado de la, de la moneda, ¿no? So es como la doble moral. This piece, actually, you can see it on both sides, so you can go behind it. She didn't bring that image, but it is also nice for her because she thinks of it as sort of looking at the other side of morality by looking at the other side of the, of the fabric. Resalto el sitial que han alcanzado las mujeres en estos espacios, antes solamente destinadas para el perreo, ahora cantan. El bordado convertido en lenguas de fuego complementa el, complementa el erotismo de las mujeres que se exhiben poderosas. Las figuras vulneran el control y afirman la agencia del deseo. Esta pieza está completamente trabajada en bordado. Um, this piece is all embroidery. This piece is all embroidery. And I'm trying to highlight the, the new space that women are doing in urban music um, because they're not just um, limited to dance, to the perreo, to that doggy style dance, that now these are figures of power, of empowered women in music, rather than simply relegated to dancers. Um, they're, they're, they're powerful figures. And they, these, these figures are sort of being vulnerable to control and they're affirming their agency for desire. Mi trabajo se bandea entre lo escultórico con materiales suaves al gran formato en el bordado. Utilizo textiles, creo formas orgánicas y metamórficas que se convierten en declaraciones políticas que desafían las relaciones del poder. Manifestaciones y luchas por defender el derecho al aborto seguro, la descolonización del cuerpo y los conflictos entre lo íntimo y lo público con respecto a los asuntos inherentes a la mujer y su autonomía son las referencias para la pieza titulada Ustedes aquí adentro, esto es bien violento. My, my work sort of sways between um, sculptures with soft materials 
to large formats with embroidery work. Um, I use the textiles as organic forms and metamorphosized forms that sort of turns into political declarations about relations of power. Um, I, use, I, I use these as manifestations about uh, the right to a safe um, abortion, to the decolonization of the body, and to the conflict between the, the intimate world and the political world, and the public world, I'm sorry, um, as, it, as it connects to, to issues of women, of issues of autonomy, um, and, and this is why this piece is called, We Are All In Here, This Is Getting Really Violent. That's what the name of the piece is called. En Milk, trabajo los contrastes entre el uso espontáneo de las telas e informal de las lonas crudas que otorgan movimiento y fuerza a la estampa. Nuevamente, eh, durante la pandemia en el 2020, las mujeres en Puerto Rico se tiraron a la calle eh, para, poder, para luchar por que se estableciera un estado de emergencia por eh, el auge de la violencia doméstica durante el encierro. Esto generó duras críticas por parte de hombres y mujeres del gobierno de la isla en contra del movimiento feminista. This piece is called Milk, and I work here with the contrast between um, the um, lonas um, canvas, yeah. um, the canvas, the raw canvas that I'm using here to create a sense of movement in, mm -hmm. in the piece. Um, in 2020, women in Puerto Rico um, did a public demonstration against the high levels of violence that occur, especially in domestic violence that happened in, because of the pandemic, during the pandemic. Um, and they, they marched for um, asking for a state of emergency because of all these issues. The, the government, both men and women in the government, um, were very critical of this demonstration um, and they used a very anti-feminist rhetoric to, um, to denounce the demonstrations. Durante la realización de esta pieza, me cuestioné el odio hacia las mujeres indomables. Y me, o sea, me crea conflicto tratar de entender por qué este tipo de mujeres tan amenazantes, por qué resultan tan amenazantes. Eh, pienso que es porque las mujeres saben del desafío que radica en educar un hijo sin amamantar a la bestia patriarcal. En este caso, el, porque estamos aquí lo digo porque no me gusta como que explicar los símbolos en mi obra, pero el toro, ella está cargando un toro y él, lo que significa es esa bestia, ¿no? Y cómo ella la, mamant la puede amamantar o, o la puede eh, evolucionar hacia otro camino, ¿no? Uh, during the, while I was making this piece, I was always wondering about the, the hatred that existed in my culture about untamable women. And I was wondering why they were always thought as so threatening um, to society uh, when women in here are, are in a way sort of challenging in a radical way the whole notion of educating a son, for example, Without, without that son being, and she says, breast, being best breastfed by the, by the patriarchal bull. And that patriarchal bull is the one that is embroidered in the, in the fabric of the body in there. That, and, and I love the, the notion, I, she, I, <laughs> love the, the notion of the bull as something that can fight but also that, can, that is sort of connected to the masculine, to the patriarchal notion of raising a child within patriarchy or not. Um, esta imagen es la pieza instalada en el certamen del Autwin en la Galería Nacional de Retratos de la Smithsonian. La pieza actualmente está en exposición en el Orlando Museum of Art en Florida y coincidió con la instalación de mi exposición individual que la, se acaba de desmontar. Vengo de una isla de confusión en el Rollins Museum en Winter Park en Florida también. Um, this, here's an image of that piece at the, um, at the National Gallery, the National Portrait Gallery at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Uh, the piece is pr uh, presently at the uh, Orlando Museum of Art, an exhibition, and it was there. Um, then there was also in the, in the sort of solo exhibition that she did 
at the Rollins Museum of the, the exhibition called Vengo de una Isla de Confusión, I come from an island of confusion. Both, of, both museums are in Florida. Esta pieza se titula La Isla Apagada 2, es de este año, pero es la segunda parte de la pieza que vimos anteriormente, que es La Isla Apagada, que la realicé en el 2016. Esta pieza está basada en las complicaciones con el nefasto sistema eléctrico y los apagones que se viven rutinariamente en Puerto Rico desde hace seis años. Servicio deficiente que además es carísimo. Empleo un juego de palabras otra vez, donde la mujer en posición de dar a luz Corta el cordón, um, cordón umbilical, ejemplifica eh, la desconexión con el hijo y la desconexión de la luz eléctrica. This is a sequel to the 2016 piece La Isla Apagada, the turned off island. So this is the turned off island two. Um, and this is a piece from this year, from 2023. And this one is much more connected to the whole series of power outages that Puerto Rico has been suffering for several years now. Uh, because of ineptitude with the power company, a privatized power company there, the last six years, sorry, um, the power outages have been happening. Um, there's a, a, a play on words in here, in Spanish, to give birth is dar a luz, literally to give light. And so there's the notion of light as in power, there's the notion of light as in giving birth. And so the woman is there giving birth but also in the desire of sort of having or wanting to have that electricity, that light with her. Um, and the cutting the umbilical cord with the, with the sisters is also, it's both the separation of the sun, but also of losing the light, of losing the power because of the power outages. Otras imágenes en la obra eh, se convierten en símbolos que aumentan las capas de interpretación e ironía en el tema de los derechos humanos como es la maternidad deseada y en el contexto del desplazamiento de los puertorriqueños de la isla ocasionado por las leyes que benefician a los inversionistas extranjeros. Está completamente trabajada en bordado y la parte del fondo está trabajada en acrílico. Um, the, the other images from, the, from that same piece are very much connected to human rights um, and also to the displacement of Puerto Ricans to other parts outside of the island, the Flamingo and Florida and all of that. Um, and also I'm, I'm trying to, give me a second guys. Um, yes, talking about the, the notion of freedom um, and the art as a, I'm so sorry, I'm reading the wrong paragraph. This is work. <laughs> I haven't done this in a long time. This is how I earned money when I was a graduate student. Sorry about that. Um, El número 28. Sí, estoy, sí, 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 yo sé dónde estoy. Oh, and the other thing about the, 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 uh, the, the displacement of Puerto Ricans outside of, out, out of the island because of the laws that benefit um, the people who are invert, uh, investing money in Puerto Rico rather than the people that are living in Puerto Rico trying to make money in Puerto Rico. And so the whole economic notion is connected to this piece as well. Para concluir, porque pues el tiempo apremia, quisiera compartir con ustedes eh, que yo concibo el arte como motor de vida, eh, creación, transformación, me interesa replicar las formas que me rodean y que me dan fuerza. A través del arte he obtenido respuestas y libertad. El arte es un derecho para el ser humano. En lo personal me ha salvado de caer y cuando caigo me levanta. Muchas gracias por la atención de todos. Uh, to conclude, I just wanted to give you a notion of the way I think of art. And I think it as an engine of life, as a creation and as a transformation. I am very interested in sort of replicating forms that surround me and that give me strength. Through art, I have, I have found answers and I have found freedom. Art for me is a right for a human being. It has saved me from falling. And when I have fallen, I have stood up again. Thank you very much. Gracias, Gracias.